Hello everyone, welcome to the Social Agency Hangout. Um, sorry about the slightly late start today. We don't have a Bill Borman here today, unfortunately. He's gone uh, gone into an underground bar where he doesn't have internet access, so um, unfortunately won't be here. We've got uh, at Fish Dogs, Craig Fisher here, joining us from America. 12 o'clock, midday, sunny, is it? Mm -hmm. Yes, beautiful day <laughs> um, out. Fantastic. It, it, is, it isn't here, is it? And Amanda, we've got at Rex Socially. Um, we're going to be discussing cool recruitment tools. Um, uh, it's quite a casual sort of affair, so we're, we're going to all chip in. We're going to comment, uh, and I'm going to let first Craig and Amanda introduce themselves. So if we start with Craig. Hello. Uh, yeah. Uh, thanks, Lewis. I am... Craig Fisher, I'm at Fish Dogs on Twitter and just about every place else. You can find me at fishdogs.com. And I'm a partner with Ajax Workforce Marketing, which was the first LinkedIn certified training company in North America. And we're a LinkedIn preferred partner. And we help companies uh, build their corporate and employer brands uh, by helping to align their employees' online profiles and activities with the brand message. And uh, by doing this, the employees build a better personal brand for themselves by showing that they can talk about work properly and support their own organization and achieve their goals like attracting talent uh, to the company. And the corporation gets to expand by lighting up these brand ambassadors all over the place and through their networks do more attraction. So, uh, so a, sub tools uh, agencies can agents can use themselves as individuals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fantastic. And Amanda, could you introduce yourself, please? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm Amanda Rashworth. Um, I am Rex Socially um, on Twitter, which is where you can normally find me. Um, I'm a consultant, and I've been in the industry about 10 years, um, and tools are something I'm quite geeky about, um, and especially at Zephyr. That's it. Well, thanks for joining. Um, oh, I'm Louis. Welcome as well, colleague RS. Um, and the hashtag for this hangout is hashtag social agency. If you have any questions, if you want to join in, please don't uh, please don't hesitate. Just tweet that out, and I'll be happy to pass that over to the guys here. What's that noise? Yeah, that's that's a lawnmower outside my house. <laughs> I'm going to mute while I'm not talking. <laughs> that's fine. I'll just go on now. Um, what tool should we discuss first? Does anyone have any favorites? So, go ahead. Um, my, one of my favorites is Reportive. Um, Reportive is such an easy tool to use. Um, it is a Google um, Chrome extension, and basically you add it, um, and you are able to identify people's email addresses. Um, you, you generally is kind of guessing if you're sourcing. Um, and then what it will do is it will bring you up their social profiles on the right hand side of your Google. Um, but you do need to use um, Gmail for it. Yeah, that's a great tool. Um, have you ever used the social connector for Outlook? It's a, not it's not as cool as uh, reportive. Um, but no, you can I use that. It. Worth looking at because a lot of agencies, I guess, will be using Microsoft Outlook, the larger ones, and you can connect that into your Microsoft Outlook account, and with it, you can automatically connect with people on LinkedIn and some other networks, like Reportive Works. You just put their email in, and it finds that any associated accounts. It's quite useful if you put their email into the to field; it, it'll locate them on LinkedIn automatically. So. Um, so That's are you talking, at. Louis, about, about Smarter? Is that the one you're talking about, the social connector for Outlook, Smarter, uh, or the reported one? Uh, it's just They just call it Microsoft Social Connector, I believe, um, yeah, for so Outlook. Is a, there a better one? There's a couple of these. So um, there is a tool called Smarter, S-M-A-R-T-R, -R, and it works very much like reported, and there's a version of it for Outlook. Um, right. LinkedIn actually bought Reportive. I don't know if you guys know that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I was there when it happened at LinkedIn's headquarters in San Francisco, and there was a big celebration. They really like this tool. Yeah. But one of the cool things, which is odd to me that LinkedIn likes it so much, and they do this with lots of the tools they buy, 
because you already have the email address, it allows you to skip the hoops that you have to jump through to connect with people on LinkedIn proper, yeah. right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Smarter does the same thing as does that uh, uh, Outlook connector from Microsoft. These are all good tools. I actually run them side by side and you get slightly different results with each and you can also take notes about the people that you're uh, looking. So if you get emails into your inbox with resumes attached, this is a really good way to quickly scan the social profiles and take notes on the candidates that are sending resumes into you. So you can run Smarter and the Social Connector both at once on Outlook? You can run several things uh, all at once if you know how to hack Outlook properly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> There's Microsoft behind. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. Uh, any, well, any more? <laughs> uh, well, one of the, uh, I probably want to add this about reporting, one of the good things yeah. is it shows you the most recent um, updates that people have done. And um, what is actually scary is how many people, um, their statuses on Facebook are private. Um, so I, I've seen a few kind of shoppers um, where obviously people think that people can't see them. And the, the best thing I do is put somebody into reporting, check out their social profile. Um, yeah. Yeah, so uh, that's it's a really funny thing because people that you aren't connected to at all on Facebook, their latest uh, photos and comments will show up directly from Facebook and report it, and it's like, hey, that's very interesting. It does give you conversation starters, though, right? So you can quickly yeah. reply to someone and say, hey, how's your dog doing? Sorry to hear about that. They don't know what you're talking about, but they get that you know you're yeah. trying to start a conversation. So. Uh, as far as conversation starters go, we as recruiters need that a lot, right, in order to mm -hmm. sort of make that quick bond. And so these sort of peripheral tools to help scan social profiles quickly and, and recent updates are really good for that. They're also good to see if anyone is talking about a new job or mm -hmm. a certain technology. And, uh, and you can actually search uh, with both of these tools. You can search with Reportive. Um, all the other emails that that person might have even been attached to or copied on that are in your email database. Right, okay. Yeah, um, so. Another quite a cool one that um, I recently discovered was, um, I think it's called um, LookUp, it's by Talentbin, and it's just an app that um, you download. I don't know what you think. Um, yeah, it's called LookUp, um, and that's really good for um, typing in a company name and it'll bring you up anybody's social profile um, that works at the company. So especially um, if somebody's got a blog, it will bring you up their blog um, and also their social network. That's cool. So how, uh, how, how does that work? Is that, on the, is that an add-on, is it? No, so, uh, sorry, that's an app. So um, I don't know if right. it's available on the Android. Um, I have it on my iPhone, so... Yeah, it's mobile. A free so. one. Right. Cool. Okay. I don't know that one. I'll have a look at that one. That's very cool. Okay, so um, I thought we might talk about uh, some serious hacks for sort of building your own recruitment program. Um, I did this when I started my first uh, agency with a partner, um, you know, when I quit working for Corporate America. I started a company called A-List Solutions in 2007 and it was based on using only free uh, social media platforms for all the marketing, job distribution, advertising, job board, and everything else. So at the time we were using LinkedIn, it was an upgrade account but mostly free, right? And, um, and then other social media platforms for everything and I came up with distribution methodologies and uh, ways to share other content so that you're not just spamming jobs all the time. And there are a few things that people ask me about all the time. How do you automate all this stuff? And it's really, there, there's a combination of things. Now there are a couple of tools that you can use to try to automate all with one, but it's much easier if you just use several tools and keep track of them. Um, one of the things that I've been working with a lot is if this, then that. Have you guys played with that yet? Yeah. No, I've heard of it, but I've not paid for it. Yeah. You can, create these, you can create these amazing formulas that will trigger other things. So, say, anytime you post a photo to Instagram, you can have it automatically post to a um, hundred other platforms. So you can build your own uh, bullhorn reach, for instance, with much more 
uh, control over where things go and, and what they do. You can even build mobile programs and, and campaigns with them. So you can have certain mobile numbers uh, alerted when certain events online happen, including your own. So, uh, I mean, one of the fun, silly things you can do is have a text sent to your phone if it's going to rain that day. So you have that kind of control, and it's all based on information that's already out there or RSS feeds that are posted. So anytime you, for instance, if you have a, a blog for your jobs and you want to start creating visual job postings versus just standard text jobs, and you need a way to distribute those, you could have a blog for that where those are posted and have it automatically pinned and tweeted and posted to Instagram and your Facebook page, and it's it's really effective. You can also stagger the times when they go out. You can use a tool like CrowdBooster to suggest when you're most effective online and stagger those times for the different platforms. So, so uh, is it like it's like a, a a very detailed curation tool or management? It's really more of all about uh, trigger events. So you right. can you can connect with every platform that you have a profile in or your company has a profile in and it just suggests that when any one thing happens here it can also happen in other places okay yeah That's that, that sounds like a good tool I might look at that yeah and there are a lot of pre-designed formulas already on there so that you don't have to really know how to code um, you can just go in there and use a pre-designed formula and, and take it and alter it for your for your purposes. It's really cool. Right, so, so anyone can use it. You don't have to be technical. A anyone can use it. IFTTT.com. IFTTT.com. Fantastic. I like the sound of that. I'm sure one of the uh, recruiter I know is using it. I think, yeah. Um, next. <laughs> Um, Falcon um, for Twitter. Um, oh, yeah, Phil's yeah. very into that, yeah, isn't um, he, at the moment? Yeah. Um, I would say that's my second favourite. I've switched between that and Report It. Um, it's amazing that you just hover over somebody's profile and again it brings you up the rest of their social profiles. So if you're sourcing, um, it's, it's, it's great because you, you do generally always stumble across some contact details or it just gives you a bigger picture um, of the candidate you're looking at. It just works on Twitter, though, doesn't it? It just does work on Twitter, yeah. It's called Falcon? Yeah. All right, cool. I like that. It's, you have, it, it, yes. It's, it, I, I'm hoping they might be able to do it for any social media channel, but I'm guess, I guess not to, not being a technical person, there'll be a lot of work in doing that. But do you think that's something where they'll go down that route? Um, I doubt. I doubt it. Um, I think there's so many um, products that kind of come out, and they, um, you know, they they kind of plug into somebody's um, API. Um, but with a yeah. lot of the free products, um, it's then quite hard to then take it to a paid version. So you know, I play around with products, and then something cool will come out. So I kind of maybe switch over to that. Okay. Um, I've just had a tweet from Recruitment Geek. Uh, this is the chat. He's using it, this and that, uh, Craig. Mm -hmm. He says it's essential for distribution information across platforms. Mm -hmm. So there's an endorsement. <laughs> All right, yeah. No, it's, it's great. And, yeah. and it can do so many things. You, you can't even begin to imagine until you get in and look at some of the formulas people have created. If you are all uh, at all creative in the way you go about sourcing or alerting or, or um, spreading your jobs around and getting things noticed and content curation, uh, the, the possibilities are pretty endless. It's, it's just pretty amazing. Um, yeah, so the other thing that I would suggest is if you are um, into posting jobs online and you get some uh, good response from that, is it possible that if you build a bigger network that you'll get better response from that and a better targeted network that you even get better response from that. So uh, I was going to talk about one of the tools that I use for network building and targeting and that's Tweet Adder. Do you guys use that? Um, I have in the past. It's not a, not a great thing. So they made some adjustments to it. I quit using it for a while because it got a little wonky on me, but they made some adjustments and now it's it's pretty dead on again. 
and it does several things for you. You can um, you can use it to uh, schedule tweets and and other things. You can use it for search, which has got a pretty amazing search engine. But you can also use it to follow all the followers of someone in your space that has a big following. So, right. for instance, if there's yeah another recruiter that um, has fifty thousand followers and you want to get that audience, you can follow all of them. Now, we know from experience that about 25% of people on Twitter will follow you back right away, and then you have to go flush out the rest that don't after a few days so that your ratio stays pretty clean. Um, and I use uh, Manage Flitter for that. I use Social Bro um, for that, and that's quite a good one to mm -hmm. kind of keep track. I use Social, Social Bro as well, yeah. 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 Um, I like Manage Flitter for a couple of things. It's a little faster uh, than Social Bro, and if you have an upgraded account, you can unfollow a lot more people, right. um, and it's cheaper than Social Bro. I use Social Bro too, but some of the search features that Manage Flitter has are pretty unique, and some of the way that you can segment your audience by time zone um, and other filters are pretty cool. Social Bro is really good um, for when you're making lists. Um, I generally make most of my lists from within Social Bro. Well, why is Social Bro so good for that? Um, because you can, um, again, it's in segmentation, um, and you right. can do it. It's, you can because you can just do it all in a kind of mass number, so it's really, really simple and easy. Um, so Twitter is absolutely fantastic. Love Twitter, but it's the product to kind of use it properly and effectively um, on within Twitter. So Social Bro would be one of the ones I'd use. Okay. Yeah, I use lists almost exclusively on Hootsuite or Twitter or you know any any Twitter platform that I'm using. And Social Bro is the ultimate tool for list making. Okay. Um, yeah, Hootsuite again um, for my list. Um, I'm very rarely these days. I'm uh, I'll build Twitter on my phone generally, but very rarely Twitter is on my screen. Um, I tend to use um, Hootsuite more because they're the conversations I'm interested in. Uh, do you use Hootsuite on your iPhone? Um, I've got the app, but I haven't used it. It's pretty good. It works almost exactly like the desktop app does. Right. And something that I've just found that Hootsuite has offered for the desktop app is a plugin called Assignment for Chrome. Right. And you can right click on anything that you're looking at online and uh, send a note about it to anyone that is in your Hootsuite group at your okay. and say, you know, you might want to look at this article or this might be a good lead. And uh, it's a pretty cool little tool. It's an add-on like for Chrome again, for Hootsuite. Right? Hootsuite assignment for Chrome. Okay. So would you both recommend Hootsuite over TweetDeck? I would. You would? Yeah, yeah absolutely. You see, I'm a TweetDeck user, but uh, I haven't used Hootsuite for about a year now. I mean, it, it might, might have come on bounds. Um, I think, I yeah. Um, TweetDeck, I think, fine. Obviously, TweetDeck is owned by Twitter. Um, it just used to irritate me more than anything, so I switched over to Hootsuite. I'm quite happy and don't think I'll probably ever switch back. It was the same for me. Uh, TweetDeck just got a little slow and was taking up a lot of memory on my machine and Hootsuite's you know all cloud based and it's it's pretty fast. Okay. Okay. I might reconsider that then. Do either of you you use buffer for curating stuff? Um, I have in the past. Um, I'm a or massive posting out Rob. Yeah, I'm a massive fan of um, Sprout Social. Um, mm -hmm. so that's sort of the main tool that I use for most of my social media. So my scheduling, um, Drafting, and um, if you're managing multiple accounts, um, it's a paid product, um, but I would say very much worth the investment. And they also have um, a feature they added last week with an engagement report, so you can see within your network what the breakdown is, and also how long it takes you to reply to tweets, what kind of tweets you reply to, and it's quite detailed reporting. Okay, so another yeah. one to look at. Sprout Social is the one that I always recommend to clients who are looking for a paid solution. It's not really an expensive solution as far as those go. It's great for listening and it's great for curation. 
Um, I, yeah, I, I really agree. I used Buffer too um, for a while, yeah. and it's. Um, I just deactivated it after a bit because it started slowing down my Gmail account. Right. Okay. Um, That's another really cool. Sprout. Yeah, another cool toolbar, um, but it does it does slow things down, and sometimes um, if you're within Facebook and um, images are quite hard, is the sorterist toolbar. Um, the sorting toolbar is again, it's really really cool for doing X-ray searches on Google. It's the sorcerer's toolbar. And um, all the sorcerer's toolbar, I think, is called. Sorcerer's toolbar. Cool. Is that the recruiter's toolbar? Yeah. So, so Ryan, yeah, Ryan Leary's tool. Yeah. So if you're yeah. doing, yeah, so if you're doing Boolean searches, it's just um, a really good way to scrape um, Google. Um, but as I say, if you're opening images in Facebook, sometimes it does get a bit stuck. You can get that by going directly to recruitingblogs.com, and I think it's in the lower right-hand corner of recruitingblogs.com. Um, Ryan Leary built this after saving about 75,000 Boolean strings that he created in an Excel spreadsheet. And it's a really cool tool because he can just upload new searches into uh, the bar anytime he saves a whole other batch, he just uploads more. And it's growing, and it's really, really fun. Fantastic. We we just released a new bar ourselves, but uh, yeah, do you want to talk about your bar, Louis? Yeah, we we've um, it's well, it's called the exciting name of the colleague Internet Explorer add-on. Um, but it's we decided to go for Internet Explorer to use that. It's a surprising choice, and it seems to be that what everyone is uh, is talking about on Twitter when uh, Bill mentioned it recently, but um. Most recruiters are still using Internet Explorer, especially the big agencies, certainly our customers. Um, most people that come to our website, which are exclusively, uh, well, not exclusively, but the vast majority of recruitment agents um, in the UK, and Internet Explorer seems to still be the choice, so we, we developed it for that so everyone can use it. And um, there's two aspects uh, to it, which is a, a simpler version of the recruiter's toolbar, in a way, at the top, which just allows you to save different search engines um, and save different sites that you're searching over and edit and add uh, Boolean searches and that's the free bit so anyone can download that. Then you've got the side bar element to it which um, actually parses web pages with using algorithms for information um, back into the colleague database so uh, uh, we, we quite like that. We're hoping that's going to make things a bit simpler for our customers. So. Um, cool. The side and Craig, do you know of any um, great um, LinkedIn tools? Uh, LinkedIn tools, yes, absolutely. So um, that's uh, your that's your that's your thing, LinkedIn, isn't it, Craig? That's that's my thing, LinkedIn. Yeah. yeah. So um, one of my favorites is Who Works At. Yeah. Yep. So this is a plug-in for Chrome browser, and you can go to any um, any company's homepage and just hover over the icon in your top left hand corner and it'll give you a drop down menu of how you're connected to people at that company. Who's your first level connection, second level connections, and give you an option to connect with them without ever leaving the company's homepage. So again, you don't have to jump through the hoops that you normally do because the naming convention is built in and um, it's, uh, it's a really effective tool if especially you're sourcing from one of your competitors. I'd actually forgotten about that. No, it is a really, really cool tool, but yeah, I'd, I'd just forgotten. Mm -hmm. um, and then the intelligence search that Shane McCusker created is really cool. And it tells you uh, when someone has left a position at a company. So for instance, if you're trying to get more job orders at PepsiCo, and you can see that someone has just left a position at a company, well that means there's a new manager there and that usually means more headcount or new headcount in that area. Or it also means that the person who just left that position might be looking for a new job. Little known fact, when people leave a position and start a new job, about a third of the time they start another new job within about three months. So if someone's just left a recent position, they're probably ripe for picking. Believe it or not. Um, another tool then, I would, which I would recommend to everybody, um, is um, obviously Bullhorn Reach. Um, again, free. Um, you know, it's a really good way of tracking your connections on LinkedIn and the movement. 
Um, and I would say 90% of the time when it predicts somebody is looking for a move, it's generally right. Yeah, that's the is that the radar element in it? It's called yeah, radar. So, yeah, so obviously there's yeah. certain things that people do when they're looking for a move. Um, their, their profiles become more active. So you you update your profile, you connect with recruiters, um, you get recommendations, and I think it's four signals um, that generally somebody that's looking for a move starts to do. Um, and yeah, it's always it is always quite interesting. So for passive candidates, must. Craig, that one you mentioned just before, what was that called again? It's it's called Intelligence Search, and you can go, I've just looked up the address, it's uh, intel-sw.com, that's Shane's website, slash search levers, slash index.php. It's kind of long. Okay, thanks. Is that a bit like Job Change Notifier then? That's another LinkedIn tool. Yeah, it, it, it is. Notified, I actually, I'm going to say Notified is rubbish. Um, it, it does not update automatically. You have it, to do it manually, don't yeah, you? Yeah, it's quite random to when you get the updates through. Um, sometimes yeah. they can also be quite old when you get them through. Um, whereas um, with Ball and Reach, it is very much uh, kind of real time. Yeah, radar is a pretty amazing thing. It actually looks at a lot of the different things that people start doing when they um, make a job search uh, or a job change, or they're or they're you know looking to make a job change. Um, and the other thing you can do is is search signal to get some of the same results. Um, so radar from Bullhorn Reach will sort of send you push notifications on that. But if you want to look at specific people within your own network. Uh, and even out of your network, you can search Signal on LinkedIn, and if you uh, check um, current position or uh, you know some of the other tabs that you can check as filters, you can actually get things that they are changing, adding keywords to their profile, uh, such as JavaScript or you know something else that's mm -hmm. technical. And when people start doing this, they're in that mode of actually looking for a job. Yeah, Signal's great. Um, Signal's a brilliant business development tool. It's also a really good tool um, if you are promoting content because you get to see where your content is being distributed, who's sharing your content um, across the world, really. Um, but also what it does is it searches people's um, status updates. So you can see what clients are recruiting and also what candidates are talking about as well. And you see people that you're not connected with. Yeah, and you can find Signal under the News tab on your LinkedIn profile. I thought it disappeared about a week ago, and I, I kind of panicked. It's probably one of my favorite. It kind did of... disappear briefly, and it came back. So they've had a lot of glitches recently. And I don't know if you've noticed, but search results are strange right now as well. Um, oh, no, at the moment, hmm. LinkedIn, um, your address book as well is quite funny. Too. Yes. It's just not updating, so with new connections, um, trying to search for people, um, there's, there's things, it seems to be very buggy at the moment. So, have you guys played with graph search yet on Facebook? Um, I, I, I have. Yeah. I, did an, I did an event around Facebook graph search um, last week, which was the effect it was going to have on search and social. Um, yeah. And the graph search is really interesting. So it's pretty more, amazing. Yeah. But it's also quite scary as well. So, we did, um, there is a Facebook app. Um, which we covered, which was um, Bang Our Friends, which was a promiscuous app that you could download. And what we were able to identify is um, married people that had the app, their spouses, <laughs> and what we also were able to identify is the most promiscuous company. So IBM and McDonald's have the most employees with that app. Wow, that's awesome. That is that's so quite cool. scary, <laughs> Did you? It's going to be a game changer, absolutely. Did you uh, write a blog post about that? Because I would um, love to read more about yeah, that. Yeah, I have. So um, it, if you go to, um, I did write a piece, and one of my colleagues did, um, forward3d.co.uk. Um, it's on the website. That's so Sorry, awesome. What was that again, Amanda? Um, forward3d.co.uk. In a more simpler version, you can actually do things like say, um, who is friends with 
my friend Amanda who knows JavaScript or who works at Microsoft or who is technical or who is a developer. Um, and it's in that respect really powerful because you've never been able to search like that before. Yeah. So if you want to say, be able to say, hey, I understand you know so-and-so, I've got a job that you might be interested in. Of course, you're not saying so-and-so recommended you because that would be silly. You don't have to do that. Uh, but this is a really cool tool to do that with. And with Facebook before, there's been a couple of tools that you can kind of search public updates, um, and they're okay. But one thing that I would suggest that you do now that graph search is available is use face wash to make sure that your own profile is clean of okay. any promiscuous activity. Um, it's most people in terms of beta testing over here, it's not available. Um, so yeah. it seems to be very much released and um, people in the States have it. Um, Thomas, I think it's Thomas Scott, he wrote a Tumblr post which was really, really interesting about the, the privacy issues around it. So you can see people that work for Tesco that like horses. Um, it's just crazy, but especially it depends on what country you're in as well. There is some things that you will like brands um, that potentially, I think it was in the Middle East, that could kind of result in the death penalty for some of the stuff that people were able to find. So, um, absolutely. yeah, absolutely check out your Facebook profile and that it's kind of locked down. But I think it's, that will, Facebook graph search will be the reason I leave Facebook, I think. <laughs> you know, uh, so this Face Wash app will actually tell you um, pictures that other people have tagged you in or posted on their wall with your name that are maybe not G-rated and any um, just text updates that anyone has posted and tagged you in that have offensive language or themes. Uh, so This is the app everyone's going to be writing down now, isn't it? <laughs> face wash, yeah. And the other cool thing you can do with it is search and there's a, an odd kind of search that you can do with it. So play with it and see the kinds of things you can find out not only about yourself but about others. So it's it's an interesting app. It's not real complicated, but it it, it tells you some really telling things. One of the things that Facebook um, is soft doing um, is the activity log. Um, so it used to log, but now you can actually see. Um, if anybody logs in on your kind of settings, they're able to see um, what photos you've looked at, which people. Um, profiles you've looked at, status as you've liked, updates that you've commented on. Um, so again, it's just this whole that Facebook is now publicly logging everything that you do within the site. Yeah, and you need to turn that off. Yeah. That needs to be private immediately. Um, Amanda, do you know when uh, the graph search is coming out here? Do you Have you heard anything? No, no. It's, um, I think probably got about another six months of kind of testing, I'd say. Um, but a lot of people have signed up for it, and um, very few here has, have actually had it. Yeah. And um, so I know Bill's been playing around with it for quite some time. Um, right. Okay. I wonder if Bill knows. I'll, I'll ask him. Well, so it's, it's supposed to roll out in beta in the next two months, where they send out um, a notice to raise your hand to certain users if you want in on the beta. Um, whether or not that actually happens or not, we're not sure because it was an extra two months here before it actually started doing that. So. Right, okay. And right, okay. um, what about any tools to, um, do you know of any tools for Craig to search Instagram? Yeah, so uh, Statigram is a really good tool to search Instagram. S-T-A-T-I-G-R-A-M. And Webstagram also you can search Instagram with. The other thing you can do is search Twitter for Instagram. So um, with the right search string, you can search Twitter for Instagram users who also have JavaScript in their profile or PHP developer or app developer and in a certain location. Um, another quite cool, again, um, tool um, um, is Foursquare in terms of digital searching as well. So if you're looking for um, at competitors um, and you want to know where the C++ developers hang out, um, Foursquare is a really good way of finding out. It is. One thing you can do is do a, 
a Twitter search again. So here's the thing: a good majority of people who use these smaller apps, Foursquare, uh, Instagram, tweet their posts, right? And so you can search Twitter, and you can also search Foursquare, but Twitter is kind of a cleaner search for people who have recently checked in at Microsoft in uh, Redmond and also went to Starbucks, right? And so you can tell, what, and also who are engineers. By doing the Twitter search, you also get the biographical information yeah. that you don't get with Foursquare. So uh, you can tell when an engineer from Microsoft is checking in at uh, Starbucks every day, which would be a really great time to post a tip at Starbucks that, hey, we're hiring down the street Microsoft engineers. Also, if you happen to connect with these people, it would be a really good time to send them a text message. Hey, are you free? Because you know at that time, they're looking at their phone to check their app and get their Starbucks coupon. They're checking in at that time. So if you really want to make a connection with somebody that maybe it's hard to get on the phone, well, you know exactly when to do it. Google Plus, again, um, for connecting and having that instant access. So um, obviously, if somebody has to add you back, but then you're able to use Google Chat um, and yeah. you can use it on your phone as well. So if you're wanting to interact with candidates, most people are on Google Plus now. Yeah, and the other cool thing I think about Google Plus is when you post something and you check all your uh, networks, everybody gets an email about it. So if they're on, you know, if they're on Gmail, which a lot of people are, let's just say, it's, it's a fact. Mm -hmm. Everybody gets an email about your update. So if your update is, hey, we're hiring, you know, that's pretty good. I would say use that with um, some discerning caution because you don't want to spam that. People will, will block you out of their networks. Um, um, another one, if you're wanting to open up conversations and find out what people do talk about. Clout's very, very good so that when you're when you're looking to um, approach a candidate and you want some common ground, obviously it logs the main things that they talk about. So with me, it kind of will talk about Cambridge and shopping and sales. And um, so you know if you have a conversation with me about Cambridge, we're gonna have a bit of common ground. Yeah, Clout's really good for that. So one thing that I do with Clout is I'll start following people on Twitter first. And if it's a candidate that I'm actively stalking, right, I'll have some interaction with them on Twitter. And then I'll go give them plus K about a certain skill set that maybe they've tweeted about or posted about. And then I'm on their radar, right? So uh, you're on the radar from two sources. But when you give somebody a plus K, they really notice it because, A, it pops up on your phone if you've got the app and B, you get a, an email about it. Now, not everybody checks clout all the time, and those updates are you know, less common than, say, a, a, a retweet or something like that. So it's a really good way. Great conversation starter, man. That's exactly right. Um, uh, it's just become paid, and um, Crowdbooster I was using quite a lot, and Crowdbooster yeah. was really good to find out how effective your tweets had been and how much. Yeah, you, I use that. Um, yeah. I think also um, Visibitly um, is really, really great if you're sharing content, so um, I, I use think it. it. I think it's shared.by now, isn't it? I think it might have changed, yeah. Yeah. That's, you can um, still, sorry, you can still sorry, get a bit that way, yeah. Oh, you mean uh, which one? Visibly, I think. Visibly. Yeah, um, visibly. Yeah, so, um, so like yeah. my blogs on there, my social profiles I want people to look at, and so then when people continue to retweet you, um, there everybody is seeing this toolbar. Yeah, I use that. That's pretty good. Yeah. Um, and you, you, you can put an RS feed, RSS feed in the top as well, so it gets... Yeah, you can, you, can, you can advertise vacancies yeah. on there. If you have an RSS yeah. feed, um, so again, sharing a content... If I write a blog about... Um, tech developers and I'm recruiting for them, it's perfect. So Anything I share I put, I use that tool. And it gets really good search engine optimization as well. Yeah. I'm yeah, just... it comes up in Google search results. I'm just trying to find the address for um, what it is called now. Do carry on. I'll find the address so I can let people know where it was. I think it's share dot BY. So um, a couple of tools that uh, I have used to do some quick curation of visual job descriptions. A company um, hired us a while back to help them improve their 
their job descriptions. They were text-based. They were actually written by marketing with information gathered from the hiring manager, and they were, like most job descriptions, terrible. And they wanted to attract Gen Y. I said, look, you need to get visual with it. And so I built one from scratch. I hired a designer, and I used Photoshop, and I did, you know, use the template. And it was massively uh, cumbersome, but doable. But there are some tools that you can use that are faster. You can use Jobgram, which is, um, you know, that's, uh, that's Paul's app. And you can go to myjobgram.com, I believe. Uh, there is a tool, a company called Pin the Job, which is, uh, that's Aki Steel. Right. Uh, and, and it's really cool. And then there's another one called Most Wanted. And that is at uh, mostwanted.herdwisdom.com. And, uh, and that's a pretty easy solution. So uh, I'm a big fan of this. I think if you want to get a specific job noticed better, you can use Pinterest and, and Instagram and Facebook pages to really proliferate the job and, and tweet it out as well. And it gets, you know, a little bit more um, punch than your normal text job description. So. And have you used Vine yet at all, um, Craig? For oh, yeah. Reading? Yeah, Vine is great. In fact, so I, I helped an employer recently start creating some Vine ads for jobs and showed them how to get their employees doing this. And so they've created this Vine channel. And, wow, all of a sudden they've got all this activity and it's, and it's pretty interesting stuff. So you'll see, um, you know, uh, companies that do a lot of sort of employee videos start using this a lot, I think. It's pretty cool. Yeah, there was um, a digital agency here in the UK that um, they did as a developer, they did a sort of comic, a ninja comic, and it was fantastic. It just kind of really interactive. Um, I think it has to be used in a creative way, though. Um, yeah. But you have six seconds, which is brilliant, more than a video. And right. I'm more likely to watch a Vine video than I am probably to read a job advert. Yeah. Absolutely, and they're small enough that they can be, you know, it's easily shared, anyone can see it from anywhere, and, uh, and yeah, I, I totally agree. Yeah. I've got it, www.sharedby.co, CO. I think there's some really, really cool recruiting products around, um, but it also involves people to like to keep making them as well. Um, I would love to see more mobile apps. Um, there isn't that many recruiting mobile apps at all. Yeah. So, um, have you guys seen the, let's see, Recruiter News app? No. I think it's it's recruiting, recruiting news. Recruiting news. Yeah, and, and it's a simple app. It just um, pulls feeds from all the recruiting blogs. Uh, but it gives you some really cool content to share within the recruiting community. So it's uh, recruiting news. So I know this week there's been a lot about Google Reader, um, obviously being no more as of July. Um, yeah. I obviously mentioned Sprout Social earlier. They have, their RSS feed is brilliant. So mm -hmm. I use that more than I use Google Reader now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Feedly is really good as well, um, especially if you're using it from your phone or a, a tablet. Do either of you use or have looked at Bottlenose? Yes, Bottlenose is very cool. Why don't you talk about that? Well, I, I, I mainly use it just to check on my feeds, check and, and find good news and blogs and articles to share and see what's popular. Really. I can post across my networks. Um, but there's quite a few other elements to it. I can't remember off by hand, actually. It makes things really easy to share. It gives you the opportunity yeah. to post directly to certain platforms right from the app, which I really like. Um, I would also recommend for all recruiters and use Google Alerts. Um, Google Alerts yeah. for industry news is, is fantastic because it's straight to your inbox um, yeah. and it, you know, it's very much shareable content. Yeah, and, and that's an old school, simple solution that most people don't really even think about anymore. They think, okay, so what do we need for listening? And, um, you know, we want to spend money on Radiant 6. And you know what? You can do it cheaper and easier and, and really simply. Uh, and it's like, so Twitter feed is something that I still use all the time. And you can now feed content into 
LinkedIn and Facebook pages and all kinds of other platforms with Twitter feed. I've got 150 feeds that I feed through all sorts of platforms right from that app. You can stagger them in time. You can append them or uh, uh, follow them with any hashtags or words you want. You can have full description or just title. Um, you can filter by keyword, any RSS feed that you're trying to feed to your platforms. So the Twitter feed is possibly the most powerful tool I have. I'm liking this as a marketing person. See, I'm quite, I'm quite privileged that um, one of the yeah. clients I work with is a um, um, Twitter visualization tool um, called Crisis View, um, and that monitors Twitter in a really, really easy way. So if I'm monitoring an event, I can see what people are talking about um, without having to, you know, sometimes there's thousands of tweets, and I can just see the main kind of sentiment of the conversations that people are having. That's cool. So which one is that? Um, Crisis View. Crisis View. Yeah, dot com. Nice. I like that. I'll be checking that out. So I host some conferences uh, called TalentNet here in the States, and we're constantly previewing different visualization tools for these conferences, so we'll be checking that out. That's nice. Cool. And Louis, have you got any other tools or questions for us? Um, I use... Well, I, it's a bit of a sneak one. I use one. I I went on Google one day to try and find a monitoring tool for updating me when certain other accounts have been followed right. on Twitter. Um, and I downloaded a Twitter followers monitor. I, there, there, there are probably better ones out there. Do tell me there are. But you can add in as many um Accounts as you like, and it and it just updates you when they put a new follower and tells you who. It it it's not always. It, it's got some bugs in it, but it's quite a useful monitoring tool, I find. Um, so, what was it called? Just Twitter followers monitor. Not the most uh, inventive name in the world, but it's just okay. you just download it. It's um it's a software for the desktop. So, and Probably that's worth, different. I'm, that's different than monitor, which was M O N N I T E R. Yeah. And then you've got you've got mention as well. Mention's quite a good one. Um, Social mention. Yeah, there's yeah. so many um, Twitter tools, um, but there's not. I don't would say there's not probably as many Facebook or LinkedIn tools compared to Twitter. Um, a lot got shut down last year when um, Twitter changed their API, um, so it did block a lot of people out. Yeah. Is, so, is there anything for monitoring, or sorry, alerting you uh, when things come up in LinkedIn Signal? There's no. a way to do that with if this then that. Right. You can you can create a formula for that, and you can even have it um, send a notification by SMS to your phone. That will be awesome. At the moment, you have to go in manually, really. And just yeah. save save a search and keep checking. Yeah. Another social media monitoring tool that I came across um, the other week and trial, which I quite liked, was a company called Engager. Um, because obviously, raising at six, not everybody wants something that's all singing, all dancing. And um, Engage is really good for um, tracking mentions within media um, and also within blog posts as well. Engager. Yeah. Nice. All right. So um, I'll throw one more out there uh, that I actually just used today. Um, I was looking for the naming convention to find an email address for someone that I didn't have an email for. I knew their company and their name, didn't have the naming convention, so I went to executivebomb.com, and it'll tell you the naming convention of most major corporations. Mm. So Louis, are, we gonna, um, are you going to put a blog post up on the site with a link to some of these tools? Yes, I'll, I've got a, a messy list of names here. I awesome. think I got most of them. Um, yeah, I'll put, I'll put up a list. I'll link them, find them all, link to them. Um, if I miss any, if you guys tweet me and let me know. Um, but I think I've got most of them down. Um, I'll get that up tomorrow for everyone. So. Brilliant. Cool. Amanda, Louie, you guys are amazing. Oh, thank you very much. 
thanks for joining us as well. Really appreciate that. Well, I'm, I'm going to go join um, Bill in the underground bar now. So Tell Bill I said hello. <laughs> I will do. Yeah, are you guys going to be in Helsinki by chance? No, I'm going to um, Amsterdam, but not Helsinki. Okay. Well, so I might see you in Amsterdam. I will be in Helsinki, but uh, tell Bill I'll see him soon. Okay. All right. Okay. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. Appreciate it. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye.